Think for a moment about the feeling you have when you open something. Maybe it's a birthday gift, all wrapped in bright colors and bows. There's mystery and uncertainty. What's inside for me? Or maybe, to borrow an analogy from a famous movie, it's a box of chocolates that you're about to open. As Forrest's mom said, you never know what you're going to get when you open it. I can already hear you. All right, Matt, where are you going with this? Okay, let me bring this around to real estate. How does it feel right before the door opens for a listing appointment? Or right before the Zoom meeting starts, as the case may be these days? There's uncertainty, isn't there? There's anticipation. Which way is this going to go? Can I overcome the seller's objections? Am I going to get the listing? Let's try to remove some of that uncertainty today. There's that same doorbell we heard in part one of this series on winning the listing appointment. In that episode, my guest Aaron Novello talked about pre-qualifying the seller, the super important things you do before the listing appointment. Today, in part two, Aaron is back, and we're talking about what happens after you ring the doorbell. Today is all about how you close the deal and get the paperwork signed. This is The Walkthrough. Hi, everyone. I'm Matt McGee, editor of Homelight's Agent Resource Center and your host every week right here on The Walkthrough. On this show, you'll learn what's working right now from the best real estate agents and industry experts in the country. At Homelight, we believe in real estate agents. That's why we created The Walkthrough. We're on a journey to find out how great real estate agents grow their business, stand out from the crowd, and become irreplaceable. You can get involved in the show in a couple ways. Leave me a voicemail or send me a text. Uh, The number is 415-322-3328. You can also send an email. It's walkthrough at homelight.com. Or find me in our listener community on Facebook. Just go to Facebook, do a search for Homelight Community, The Walkthrough. We'd love to see you in there. As I mentioned a moment ago, this is part two of our Winning the Listing Appointment series with agent and coach Aaron Novello. Real quick reminder, Aaron is a super successful agent in the Fort Lauderdale area. He's been in the business 14 years, sold more than 1,400 homes, and closed more than $325 million in sales volume. He's an active agent and a team leader. He also launched his coaching and training program about seven years ago. Now, part one of this series came out two weeks ago on August 31st. If you missed it, You don't have to stop right now and go listen to it. Today's show will make sense on its own, but you really should listen to part one as soon as possible. We've had really great feedback about it, so don't miss that one. In that first part, we talked about pre-qualifying the seller. Now, pre-qualifying is something I know you usually associate with buyers, but Aaron says it's how you start to win more seller listing appointments. Pre-qualifying is all the stuff that you do before the actual listing appointment begins. Today, in part two, we're going to focus on what happens at the listing appointment. So you'll hear Aaron talk about the three stages of the listing appointment, how, when, and why you should use a takeaway close with your sellers. And Aaron shares in detail exactly what he says when sellers ask him to discount his commission. So if you're ready, let's get started. We are talking about winning the listing appointment. And today's conversation begins right when the seller opens the door. You know, from the moment we hit the door, it's uh, it's like scripted, man. There's a particular path that we follow. So, you know, in hitting the door, it's like a big smile. I used to at the beginning of this game, like, you know, I'm the professional. "Mm." (laughs) I had to remind myself, like, hey, man, just smile. Like, you know, it's inviting. Uh, it's, a, it's a really important gesture. When we used to be able to shake hands, you know, shake hands, like, hey, how you doing, Aaron Novello? Nice to meet you. And did you want me to take my shoes off? Again, it's respectful. This is your space. I'm entering into your space. They're like, no, that's fine. Great. So what I'd like to do, if it's okay, is just take a quick look around the home um, to see what it has to offer. Would that be all right? And they're like, yeah, that's fine. And I'll say, great. You know, I'm noticing, Matt, that the the space, you know, it's very tastefully furnished. The furniture fits the space very well. So when we have offers come in, are we going to be including the contents or do you want to take that with you to your next destination? Now notice what I just did there. When we have offers coming. Right. 
<laughs> they haven't committed to you yet, but you're talking as if they have. Uh, exactly right. I'm assumptively closing. Like it's already happening. Just like if you noticed in the prequel, I said, hey, do you plan on making any changes or modifications before I start to bring buyers through? Right. And you just like flew right by it. You're like, oh, no, like I'm open, like whatever. But in your brain, it's like I'm moving this forward. Right. And then as we're walking through, I'll probably ask you another question, which is a which circles back to the prequel, which is, yeah, and if I remember correctly, based on our conversation, you know, you don't plan on making any additional major changes and modifications before I start to bring buyers through. Is that right? No. Nope. Again, assumptively closing. Right. Make sense? So that's two. Two closes. We haven't even sat down and talked about anything. <laughs> and then and then I notice I'm directing from the beginning. So it's like, okay, what I'd like to do is just take a look around. Somebody has to be in control. And what I'm aware of is if you leave it up to the seller, you end up on the couch talking about like their kids and tea and crumpets and like two hours go by and like you're like, what the hell just happened? Right. Okay? Yeah. So somebody has to be in control. So I take control immediately when we get in. And then I and then we're directing more. It's like, okay, so I, I guess we could sit here at the kitchen table go over some information I'm like sure that's fine and i always sit at the head of the table right because i don't want to sit up opposite from people i want people to be like i can see both of them right because opposite is like adversarial and then you know it's just like hey first and foremost i just wanted to uh, begin our time together just by saying thank you sincerely for the opportunity to share some information with you and potentially help you with the sale i always like to begin these conversations matt just by asking a few quick questions make sure we're on the same page would that be okay and you're like yeah that's fine so the first question i have which i'm pretty positive i know the answer to is that um, you guys have decided that you want to downsize and sell this home. Is that correct? And you're like, yeah, that's what we've decided. Okay, good. And it's not, you're not interested in like acting like a, you know, kind of renting it out. I know you, you said that's a possibility, but really we just would prefer to cash out and be done. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Okay, good. And then that leads me to my second question, which I'm also pretty sure I know the answer to, is we want to position this property price-wise to sell. We don't want to give it away. That's for sure. At the same time, we don't want to have it sit on the market for like six or seven months just testing the market. Is that correct? And you're like, yeah. Now, by me saying you definitely don't want to give it away, I'm aligning myself with you. Every time you say that, the seller's going to be like, yeah, you're damn right. I don't want to give it away. Okay. Right? So it's like we're on the same team. And then that leads me to my third question. You know, uh, I'm aware that I sent you over some information and in preparation for connecting. I'm sure you did some due diligence. You checked me out online. You saw our track record and reviews. I know I came very highly recommended via the platform. So have you guys already decided that you would like for me to help you with the sale? With a big smile. Right. <laughs> with a big smile. And notice, you see, and like people can't see us right now, but you see what I'm doing in my head? Right. You're nodding your head up and down saying yes yeah. and, and smile. And they're like, uh, they're either going to say yes no, or maybe. I want to hear what you have to say. Okay. Now notice that's three, like we just sat down. We haven't talked about price. We haven't talked about commission. We haven't talked about anything. So that's three kind of closes before we're even having a conversation, right? Now you might say, let's say you say, yes, great. I do the little inside dance. Yay. And then I just go <laughs> right into, you know, kind of great. The only thing, the great news is, is uh, we, we only have to discuss a couple of things. The first is your motivation. Second is price. We get right into price, right? If they say no, or if they say maybe, say, okay, you know, I know this is a big decision. You want to make sure you're making the best decision possible. I want to be clear, Matt, that that, that is my intention. So provided that what I say to you makes sense and you guys do feel comfortable and confident with me and my team, I do have all of the appropriate paperwork with me and I'm prepared to go to work for you today. Fair enough? And you're like, yeah, that's fair. That's four. Which is like, look, this isn't, you know, we're not just like tea and crumpets. Like we're not going to get off the hook that easy, right? Like, right. That's the intention yeah. here. And what I'm aware of, too, is a lot of times, you know, sellers want an agent who's politely proactive and aggressive, you know, politely. Because they're going to be fighting for them to make sure they're getting top dollar. Right. So it's really what we're demonstrating. And then I'll say to them. And along those lines, you were kind enough to share with me. You were looking for an agent that was local, had a great track record, could help you with the purchase. Is there anything else you'd be looking for from me today that would cause you you know, to feel comfortable, confident just to proceed and put me to work? And you might be like, yeah, we want to talk to you about the commission. Okay, cool. So it sounds like, you know, provided we check off all those boxes and we come to an agreement in terms of the professional fee, then there's a good chance we'll be able to get started. And again, I'm excited to have that opportunity and have everything with me to go to work. Okay. And then it's like, all right, well, at the culmination of our time together, there are a few potential outcomes, right? The first, which we really seem to be moving in that direction. Notice what I'm doing now. Moving it forward. Yep. Is that you guys may decide to list the home with me. And again, I'm, I'm super excited to have that opportunity, myself and team and staff, everybody standing at the ready to go to work for you ASAP. The second potential outcome, Matt, for whatever reason, is you may decide not to list the home with me. And that's okay too. And the third option, and this one's just as important as the other two, 
is if for some reason at all, Matt, if I honestly felt, truly felt that I would not be able to help you get what you wanted in the time that you wanted, I may decide to very humbly decline the opportunity to list your home. The reason I would do that is I'd much rather earn your business with integrity, being honest and straightforward about what's reasonable and realistic versus promising you something I know is not going to happen and not be able to deliver on that promise. And any one of those three outcomes, I feel completely comfortable with. Fair enough? So you're, and when you say that you are, you're, you're, you're taking away the clothes, you're letting them, letting the, the seller know that there is an option where you decline to work with them if they are unreasonable or whatever it might be. hundred percent. And that is a takeaway close. So now we're up to like five, including the two when I was like walking around, right? What I'm aware of is most agents. And I mean, this with love. They go in there like, oh, please pick me, pick me, pick me, please, 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 please. And then Aaron goes in there and he's like, hey, there's a chance, you know, that's one of the options is, you know, I may decide to very humbly decline the opportunity because I'd much rather in your business being honest and straightforward about what's reasonable, and realistic versus promising you something I know is not going to happen and not be able to deliver any one of those I feel comfortable with. And that demonstrates that I'm unattached to the outcome. Aaron, listeners are probably going to shoot me if I don't have you uh, tell us what you say about your commission. The, the, the seller brought it up on the pre-qual phone call. And now you're face to face. So when that subject comes up, how do you answer that? The, the listing presentation happens in three stages. So from the time you hit the door to the time you start to talk about price, which is essentially what we ran through. There's a little bit left where I revisit some of the questions you asked me over the phone. And then there's a bridge that transitions to, you know, the good news is we really only have to focus on a couple things today. The first is your motivation to sell, which is clear. Second issue is the price. And that's the bridge. And then there's a pricing portion of the presentation. And then once we come to an agreement with, like, once we go over that, um, which again is a whole another skill set of being able to help people to self discover what's realistic, right? Because my stuff is stuff and your stuff is junk. So because it's mine, I think it's worth more. Right. And that's how it is, right? So help, helping people to self discover what's realistic for their home, that's a skill. And the second part of the conversation, and then the third part is handling objections and closing. So let's say we get to a place where, you know, we're in agreement. So I might say to you, so, you know, I'm imagining you would like it to be more, and I sure would as well. At the same time, having reviewed this information, seeing what's active on the market, not selling, and seeing what's sold and closed most recently, if you were a buyer, not a seller, because I know those hats are different. And if you guys were going to buy this place all over again, knowing that the one, you know, two doors down sold for 550 and we looked at those pictures and, you know, it was very similar to yours. As a buyer, where do you think you would feel comfortable making an offer that you believe would be reflective of fair market value? Now, in doing that, that's very intentional because if I put you in the frame of a buyer, you'll see it more accurately. I'm counteracting what's called the endowment effect. The endowment effect is because it's mine, I think it's worth more. Like this idea of ownership, it's quantifiable. Like they've done a whole bunch of studies. Like if I physically hold a coffee cup in my hand, I will pay more for that coffee cup because I held it than one I haven't touched because it, I begin to imbue it with this idea of ownership, right? So let's say you're like, yeah, probably around 550. Okay, so then here's where it comes down to strategy. So what I like to do is to go over with you the options that we have at our disposal so that way you can feel comfortable with the one we end up choosing. And whatever you decide, I'll support you 100%. Again, aligning myself with you, we go over the two options, starting a little bit higher, coming down, pricing it competitively, perhaps getting multiple offers. And then I'll ask you based on what you're looking to accomplish and why in the time frame you'd like to make this happen in, which one of those two options do you think would serve you best? You'll choose an option. Now let's say you're like, whoa, whoa, yeah, like we haven't talked about the professional fee. Okay, no problem. So let me ask you this. Um, if we can come to an agreement in terms of the professional fee, would there be any other reason why we couldn't get started today? Now, what that's called is a set aside. So most people, they start to handle objections. They like, like one comes up, they like whack them all, but then one comes up behind it. So why I'm saying if we can come to an agreement in terms of professional fee, would there be any other reason we couldn't do business? Because I want to make sure there's nothing else behind it. Gotcha. Okay. That makes sense. That makes sense. Yep. And let's say like, and it's like, if there was like a, an impediment between me and you, like a boulder, I pick that boulder up, I put it over there and I look at it and I say, if we could handle that thing over there, is there any other reason why we couldn't do this? I remove it. And let's say you say to me, no, now here's what's cool. People can't see you, but what you're doing physically with your body is you're starting to cross your arms, which is what most people will do. <laughs> once you start to talk about professional faith. Right. Because he's starting to, he's signaling to me with body language, like, mm, I don't know if I'm, like, I don't know if this is going to work out, right? I, right. I may not like what I'm about to hear. <laughs> yeah. So, and you're like, well, no, like, yeah, I think we're in agreement. Okay, great. So tell me, what were you thinking? Now, the reason why I'm asking you what you're thinking is because now there's like a negotiation and I want you to speak first. 
Okay. And let's say you say to me, well, you know, the other agents said they would do it at 5%. Okay. That's cool. I appreciate that. And I guess I'm wondering because you had an opportunity to list with that other agent, you know, if all things were equal, who would you prefer going with? Well, you, Aaron, well, may I ask why? Yeah, because like you're just super on point, like your presentation was great, like all your reviews and everything. I see. So, you know, what I'm aware of is you have options at your disposal. And the professional fee, you know, for me is is 3% on the listing side. So what we offer out to another agent, if they can find us a buyer that's ready, willing and able to purchase, that's really the decision that you have to make. So what I'd like to do, being that you've already made the decision that you'd like for me to help, is to go over with you the two options that you have at your disposal. So that way you can decide what you feel is best and whatever you decide, I'll support you, okay? So agents don't control people by, but they do have influence over what they see, right? And what I'm aware of is the professional fee is one of the tools we use to market the property in terms of what we offer out to another agent if they can find us a buyer that's ready, willing, and able to purchase, okay? And right now in your price point, I don't know if you know this, but you know between the five and 600 price point, there are 23 other properties that are available for sale. Did you know that? And they're like, no. Do you know how many sold in the last... 30 days? No, five. Now I'm wondering, does that seem like an environment that's like crawling with buyers and sellers are getting exactly what they want? Or does it seem like one that's fiercely competitive for those buyers? Fiercely competitive. Exactly. So let's imagine for a moment that we had, you know, of those 23 properties, like, you know, 18 of them are offering out a full 3%, which is what agents are accustomed to on a Coburg side in our geographic area. And then the others are offering out some sort of discount, you know, maybe like, like two and a half or 2%. As an agent, a full-time commission-based salesperson, which properties do you think you'd be more excited about showing and selling that? The ones offering out what you're accustomed to making or the ones offering out some sort of discount? Matt's shaking his head for those of you who can't see him. Right, right. He's exactly. acknowledging he yeah. understands what I'm saying to him. And he'd be like, and that's what they might do because you know he doesn't really like it, but he's like, mm, yeah, I see your point. Okay. So then you recognize that the professional fee is a tool to make sure that you get the most. Because if we're trying to maximize value, do you think we're going to do that by limiting the exposure or broadening the exposure? You'd be like, well, broadening it. Yeah. So here are the options that you have at your disposal. The first option is, is we can offer out the full 3%, which is what agents are accustomed to. And that'll increase the probability that we can get a whole bunch of people interested and you end up with top dollar quickly and efficiently. The second option is, is we offer out some sort of discount, you know, maybe like, like two and a half or 2%. And in doing so, that could end up affecting showings, which ultimately can end up affecting how much we end up getting. So my question to you is based on what you're looking to accomplish and why in the time frame you'd like to make all this happen in, which one of those two options do you think would serve you and your family best? And what you did that I loved hearing in there, what you did was my fee is 3%. If there's going to be a discount, it's going to affect the other agent and the buyer. Yeah. And let's say they came back at me and they're like, well, can't you come down a little bit? Because I know your listeners are going to be like, you didn't ask them that. So if somebody says like, well, can you come down? Oh, I see. So you're looking to get, you know, you're, you're imagining maybe perhaps we can make an adjustment on our side. You know, and what I'm aware of is one of the skills that you're hiring an agent for is their skills in negotiating, right? Because they're going to be having conversations about your price without you being present. Have you thought about that? Like, well, no. Okay, well, 1% is 1% out of 100%. 1% of 3% is 33%. I'm curious, Matt, would you lower your price by 33% just to sell it? Of course not. Right. And if an agent's main mechanism for earning your business is dramatically adjusting their fee, what do you think their strategy is for selling your home and protecting the value of your property? I mean, you want an agent that's going to fight for you tooth and nail, get you every penny possible, correct? Right. Can I share with you the great news, Matt? Yes. You found what you're looking for. Let's go ahead and take care of the appropriate paperwork and get the process started, okay? Does anybody continue to object over price at that point? No, I mean, what I'm aware of is there's always going to be like a certain segment of the population who doesn't like really see a lot of value in an agent uh, due to our business, like 5% of the agents to 95% of the business, right? Right. So like, there's always going to be some people that no matter what you say or how skilled you are, they're looking for something, which is okay. Um, but with the proper skill and and being comfortable with these conversations, you know, you'll be able to preserve value. Now, as as more competitors push in and like, you know, referral fees and like all this other stuff, like I feel like agents are going to have to be open to that conversation more often. But by having the skill, having the intangible assets that create perceived value, you know, and then at that point, you just have to make a business decision. So if you've, if you've handled it in two or three ways, right. And they're just like, look, man, no matter what you say, you're the man, I want to, I want to work with you, but it's got to be at 5%. 
And at that point, you just have to make an executive decision and say to yourself, okay, and number one, it's the exception. It's not the rule. And number two is, um, you know, is this person, what's their motivation level? How receptive are they to position the property competitively that it's actually going to sell? Is this a nice person that I want to work with that I feel like I can add to my database that, you know, could lead to further business? Are they going to be kind to my staff? Like, you know, you just have to make an executive decision. And if it makes sense, I feel like it's more about uh, a number that you feel you're comfortable being compensated. Like you have to feel good about it. You know what I mean? Right. Whatever that yeah. number is, maybe it's 6,000 a deal, maybe it's 8,000, whatever your number is, you know, it's not so much, you know, the percentage, but it's more like the number that you feel comfortable with. But again, it's a combination of things. So it's order of operations. One, you handle it with skill and uh, value that you add, uh, perceived and real. And then two, if that they're still kind of pushing back and they just want something, then you just have to make an executive decision. And that's the exception. It's not the rule. And that goes back to what we talked about earlier with the three outcomes. You have reserved the right already to say, I may decline this if it's not the right fit for me. Oh, and I can't, I can't tell you for all your listens, agents listening, it is sublime to look at somebody and be like, you know what? I appreciate the opportunity. I don't think that I'll be able to be of assistance. I wish you the best of luck. Pick up all your stuff and leave. Everyone, if you're enjoying the walkthrough, we'd appreciate it if you tell the real estate agents in your network about us. Even more, please rate and review us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen. Your feedback helps us get better, and in some cases, can also help new listeners find and hear us. And when we get around to having you on the show, the more listeners, the better, right? So far today, we have talked about the listing appointment itself, what you do and say from the moment the front door opens. And by the way, Aaron says the scripts and the approach don't change if you have to do the listing appointment over Zoom or FaceTime or whatever. He says, stick with what works. Now, before I chatted with Aaron, I went to our Facebook listener community and I did a post where I said, Hey everyone, I'm going to do an episode soon about winning the listing appointment. Do you have any questions that I should ask my guest? And what's cool is that listeners in the community shared some really, really good questions. So before Aaron and I finished talking, I wanted to make sure to get at least a couple of those questions answered. The first one came from an agent named Andrea Fernandez in Florida. And her question was, how do you stand out as a solo agent to win the listing? when you're competing against a team. So let's go back to the conversation with Aaron Novello answering that question from our Facebook listener community. You know, with a team, oftentimes the way a team is structured is it gets handed off to other people. So, you know, I might ask them and say, listen, you know, I'm, I'm, I appreciate that agent. You know, she's a great agent or he's a great agent. So I never speak despairingly about somebody, but I might ask them. So I'm curious, as far as the selection process of an agent, is it important to you to have kind of that white glove service with your agent that you know that they're the one you're going to deal with throughout the whole process versus being handed off to somebody else. Is that important to you and your family? And then they're like, well, yeah, okay. So, you know, what I'm aware of is I know you have options at your disposal. I know those bigger teams, that's usually the way that they operate. My intention in bringing that up is just so you be completely clear because, you know, I know as far as track record is concerned, their track record is going to be better because they have so many people on their team. At the same time, if you want somebody that's going to, you know, really um, give you their undivided attention and, uh, you know, work for you and make sure that you get every penny possible and be there for you every step of the way, then I know I fit that criteria. So try to turn being a solo agent into a strength. Into a value. Right. Into uh, an a value. Yeah. And, and, and another question, this is from, uh, I hope I'm pronouncing this right. It's Amy Vestardis, I think. She says, if the sellers are not ready to make a decision when you're at the appointment, what does your follow-up afterward look like? Yeah, so, and twofold. One, I'd want to make sure she was pre-qualifying before she goes, because I, th I think that would help a lot. You know, oftentimes people running out and not knowing. And you'll notice that last question I asked you in the pre-qual was, um, when I see you, if it makes sense, of course, numbers work, you feel comfortable, confident with me and my team that we can help you, you know, sell this home and get you a new property. And uh, you check me out online, see due diligence, track record, things of that nature. Do you think you'd be open to the possibility of hiring me to help when we speak? I, I've said that, you know, because I do talks and trainings throughout the country. You say that in front of agents, they're like, oh, oh my God, you ask them that before you see them? It's like, yeah, of course. So I would want to make sure she's doing that, right? If I was coaching her. 
And then I'd also want to be, I'd be curious about like what she's doing at the presentation. Is she following a specific track, right? Or is it just kind of winging it? Because the track is designed to get to a specific destination. I'd also want to figure out from a coaching perspective, if she's closing, as, as we walk through, like I'm presenting information and I'm giving good content and value and expertise, but also throughout the whole process, I am closing. So making sure that she's actually doing that. You know, I had one client that we work with where we were able to up her income dramatically just because she started asking, <laughs> like asking for business, right? Like, and, and closing. And then um, let's say I do all of that. I handle, you know, I, I do all of that. I do the prequal. I ask the questions. I'm closing during the, the listing presentation. And they're just like, you know what? You're awesome. We think you're great. Great. We just want to sleep. I think I'm on it. We just want to sleep, sleep on it for tonight. Okay. Well, and before I go, you know, I guess I'm aware that um, there's a few decisions that a seller needs to make prior to putting their home on the market. So what I'd like to do is to go over with you those decisions so that way you guys can make the decision you feel is best. Whatever you decide, I'll support you 100%, okay? Yeah. Well, the first decision is, is if they're going to sell it. You know, sometimes when we look at homework, their expectations and where the market's at are different and they decide to hold off or do something different. At the same time, based on our conversation and based on what you shared with me, your expectation was, I don't believe that's the case. I mean, we're in alignment with what you were thinking, correct? All right. right. Yeah. Okay, good. Now, the second decision is, is the price, right? Now, um, I'm imagining, like most sellers, even if it is in alignment, we still like it to be more, right? At the same time, we're in agreement that somewhere around 550 seems to be reasonable. Is that correct? Yeah. Yes. Okay. And then the third decision that a seller needs to make is who's going to help them. Now, you strike me to be super straightforward and to the point. So, you know, let me just ask you, right? Based on our time spent together, based on what you've seen, our track record, our reviews online, do you feel comfortable and confident with me and my team that we can help you sell this home? We do. Great. So it sounds like you've made all the decisions that a seller needs to make prior to putting the home on the market. So can I make a suggestion? Yeah, let's get started. Like, I guarantee you when she's asking that question, she's not doing that. So, so that's... Let's say I do all of that and they still be like, oh, you know, <laughs> okay. I do all of that. Then what I would do is I would ask them before I go, like, do you guys feel comfortable, comfortable with me? I can help. Yes. Okay, great. Now, my next question is not to create urgency, but just kind of gauge where you guys are at. Time frame wise, when do you think you'll make a decision either way? They're like, well, probably by tomorrow. Like, we're just going to sleep on it and, you know, call you back. Okay, great. So what I'll do with your permission is I'll circle back with you tomorrow. And then, um, you know, provided it all makes sense, we either reconvene or I can send you the appropriate paperwork via DocuSign and we get the process started. Okay, great. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my office in the same clothes that I presented in and I'm going to shoot them a, a video and send it to them via email and say, hey guys, you know, I just wanted to say thank you kindly for taking the time to meet with me. I know that your time is super valuable. You know, having heard the story, so to speak, and the situation, what you're looking to accomplish and why. I'm so excited, Matt, to, uh, you know, earn your business and help you get this job done and uh, make it as smooth and easy as possible. So between now and the next time we connect, if you had any questions, you know, anything that comes up after our meeting, I just want to give you my personal cell phone, right? And uh, otherwise, thanks again for taking the time to watch this. Thanks again for taking the time to meet with me. And I look forward to speaking to you real soon. And then, right? Not like an email or a text, like a video humanizes communication. And then follow up with them. When I think about everything that we have talked about here from the pre-qualification during the, the initial appointment setting to the actual walking through the house, sitting down with them at the table. I just think that it, like it boils down to knowing what to say and practice, practice, practice. You must do a ton of role play with your team. Yeah. So at the beginning, so I'm going to give you a quote that like really resonates with me as it pertains to what you're saying is that, you know, amateurs practice until they can get it right. Professionals practice until they can't get it wrong. So if you want to get paid like a professional, you need to practice like one. So for me to be able to hop on this call and just like, you know, just blah, like, you know, with you and just go, right? You could tell it's not the first time I've done this. You could wake me up in the middle of the night and be like, hey, Aaron, I'm thinking about selling my home. I'm like, great, Matt. There's just a couple of really important questions I need to ask you before we connect. And I'll be really brief because I know your time is really valuable, right? So, and that's the place that you want to get to, right? So at the beginning of my career, um, I'm aware that there's no, there's no security in this business, there's only opportunities. And I'm, I wanted to get my skill to such a degree that if there was an opportunity, there's an 80% chance I'll be able to capitalize on that opportunity. Now, if I've done that, I've created security for myself and my family. So I never wanted the, what to say to be a reason why, you know, we weren't able to accomplish goals and objectives. I never wanted to, you know, look at my son, Sebastian, and be like, 
hey, sorry, buddy, like we can't go on that trip because daddy doesn't know how to handle the commission objection. Right. So I role played at the beginning twice a day, six days a week. And I would hand write out scripts by hand every day. I would chant out loud. I would video myself. I would record myself on calls and like, you know, break it down. So um, it was a very, very conscious and purposeful effort to get as skilled as I possibly could, because I didn't want that to be a reason why I wasn't successful at this game. At the same time, at the beginning of my career, the first year, I only made 13,000 bucks. Not something people put you on a podcast to like hear about or a panel to like teach you how to do or, or to pay you to coach them, right? And the reason why that was is I didn't have an accurate assessment of reality. I didn't know that this was a a sales business. It's no different than selling books door-to-door, knives door-to-door, subscriptions over the phone. So I didn't know where to channel my energy. I had people telling me to do open houses or wear my name tag when I go to, you know, the grocery store. Like these silly rum dumb ideas that don't, don't produce income and not in meaningful levels, right? And then once I got an accurate assessment, which was that, hey, the money's not in the service, it's in the selling of the service. That doesn't mean we don't give people good service. That's expected, but that's not where the money is. The money is knowing how to sell your service. Then I was like, oh, this light bulb went off. And then I went aggressive into kind of, you know, learning scripts and dialogues and things of that nature. Aaron says it took him about 24 months of hard work and concerted effort, practicing scripts and doing role play to get to a point where he could wake up in the middle of the night and launch into his listing presentation scripts. Two years of repetition, you guys, to remove that uncertainty about what's going to happen after ringing the doorbell. As I mentioned, Aaron is a real estate coach as well as a successful agent. He's been coaching and training for about seven years and has helped hundreds of agents. If you want more information about that, check out his website. It's aaronnovello.com. Novello has two L's, by the way. I will link to his website in today's show notes. Okay, let's do our takeaways segment. Here is what stood out to me from today's episode. Number one, as soon as the door opens or as soon as the Zoom call begins, everything is scripted and you are in control. There's a path to follow. Aaron says you are leading the client along that path. The destination you want to reach, of course, is signing the listing agreement. Takeaway number two, as you go down that path, you need to be assumptively closing. You say things like, when we have offers come in, are we going to be including the contents of the home? Now, nothing's been signed, but you're talking like it's already a done deal. When we have offers come in. Aaron walked us through his listing appointment scripts, and he does several assumptive closes just while they're walking around looking at the home. Takeaway number three, we spent a lot of time going over how Aaron handles the 6% commission objection. Go back and listen to that again if you need to. I thought it was great how he positioned that as, listen, my fee is 3%. If there's a discount, it's in what will pay the other agent. And here are the risks that you have to accept, seller, if we don't offer full commission to the buyer's agent. For starters, you might not get as many showings. Takeaway number four, if you're a solo agent, use that as a value add when you compete against teams for listings. So ask the seller if they're okay with potentially being passed from one agent to another on the team. And then explain that that's not how you do things since you give clients your undivided attention. And then takeaway number five, It all comes down to practice. You have to practice your scripts. You have to role play. And not just for a couple weeks or months. Aaron did role play, he said, twice a day, six days a week for two years. I loved his quote. Amateurs practice until they can get it right. Professionals practice until they can't get it wrong. Let me say that again. Amateurs practice until they can get it right. Professionals practice until they can't get it wrong. Amen, love that. Okay, any questions for me or for Aaron, you can text or leave a voicemail anytime. The number is 415-322-3328. You can also send me an email. It's walkthrough at homelight.com or just find me and other listeners in our Facebook listener community. So go to Facebook, do a search for Homelight Agent Community, the walkthrough, 
and we should come up right away or look under the groups tab if you can't find it. So that's all for this week. Thanks so much to Aaron Novello for joining me and thank you for listening. My name's Matt McGee. Remember, at Homelight, we believe in real estate agents. That's why we created the walkthrough. We're on a journey to find out how great real estate agents grow their business, stand out from the crowd, and become irreplaceable. Go out and safely sell some homes. We'll talk to you again next week. Bye-bye, everyone.